the circumcision. We worship God in spirit. Not in the flesh. To be bringing sounds from heaven. And yet we are bringing those sounds in the gyration of demonic spirits. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 1. Like I told you last week, this scripture will be our pivot or pivot scripture for the various parts of this teaching that we are going to engage as the Lord will provide us grace. So by the grace of God, what will happen is we will journey through this scripture line upon line, precept upon precept, until we'll come to the very climax where we will talk about the circumcision. Because the Bible says in Philippians 3 and verse 3, where is the actual termination point for our study that we are the circumcision? So that's where we are going to. But to arrive there, there are certain journeys we need to take so that when we arrive there, that destination will now make meaning and you'll be able to understand it in the context of what Paul was speaking about. I have taught you before that in dealing with scriptures, in dealing with scriptures, context is important to revelation. Many or all the passages of the Bible are written in a particular context. And if you are not careful, if you are not a diligent Bible student, if you uproot a scripture out of context, then you can make it say whatever you want it to say. And you can make it mean whatever you want it to mean. So most of the time, you need to be able to establish a scripture in context. Then you can now begin to talk about it in application. If you are going to apply a scripture to your life, to your spiritual journey, you first of all need to understand the context in which it was written. And sometimes, if you have sat in my teaching when I taught you how to study the Bible, sometimes to understand context of a verse or of a chapter, you might need to go back to pretext. That means if I'm reading a portion of scripture and my portion of interest is verse 5, I might need to go back to verse 1 to understand the context of verse 5. Because I taught you when I taught you how to study the Bible that the Bible was not written in chapters and verses. The Bible is a prose. So sometimes when you are in chapter 3, you need to go as far back as chapter 1 to understand what is happening in chapter 3. For instance, that popular teaching that is called the Sermon on the Mount is three chapters of Matthew. It begins in chapter 5 and ends at the end of chapter 7. So there is 5, there is 6, and there is 7. So if you jump into chapter 7 and want to establish something in chapter 7, there's a possibility that you'll be erroneous. Or there's a possibility that you'll be ambiguous. There's a possibility that you will be wanting to read your own meaning into the text and distort the spirit of what it is that Jesus was trying to communicate if you don't go back to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 1. That entire teaching in 5, 6, and 7 was about kingdom citizens. How those who have come into the kingdom ought to comport themselves in this life. So if you don't understand 
the root, it's possible for you to misinterpret the stem. So in Bible study, there is root, there is stem, there is branch. If you have never listened to that teaching, it's on Telegram. How to study the Bible. I believe it's on Telegram. I believe we had started recording at the time I did that teaching. There is root, there is stem, there is branch. If you start beginning to establish doctrine from a branch, you will raise people who say things like, man is a spirit. So if a man goes to fornicate, is his body that is fornicating is not his spirit. Because the person does not know root, the person does not know stem, the person is babasue. Has never been schooled in how to approach the beautiful text that is called scripture. Right, so for us to arrive at verse 3, where Paul now says, we are the circumcision. Because the context of verse 3 is, Paul was trying to correct the notion of what circumcision really is. So for he, he, us to be able to come into the spirit of what Paul was communicating, we have to trace this journey back to the Old Testament. Because the matters of circumcision are matters of covenant. And if you are a student of the Bible, you know that the Bible is, is uh, separated into two basic covenants. There's the covenant of works and there's the covenant of grace. And there's no time for that now, but study scriptures. There's a covenant of works and there's a covenant of grace. And in the covenant of grace, you will find out that there's a partnership between faith and works. So, for us to be able to understand detail, we must go to covenant. See how it began. See what was the spirit behind the covenant so that when we now come to where Paul says, we are the circumcision. You will appreciate the sweet reality that Paul was trying to communicate. So this is why last week I began to show you. We arrived at chapter 17 where God was about to introduce the covenant of circumcision to Abraham. And the way we got to chapter 17 was because we had to trace Abraham's journey. And I told you that Abraham's life is a mirror, is a picture of how the journey of every man in God will be expressed. So your journey in God will always begin with a call or a contact. Every time God has something to do in the visible realm, he looks for a man. And what he initiates with that man is called contact. He introduces that man into his space so that when that man comes into his space, then he can communicate realities from his realm. Without the man coming into his space, the communications of God will look like foolishness. They will look like mysteries. So even though the man comes into the space of God, the environment of God, and the New Testament has a name for that environment. It's called in Christ. When the man comes into that environment, then God begins to communicate to him. There is no guarantee that the things that God will communicate, you will be able to totally understand in one full blow. So God communicates it at a level that at least you will be able to appreciate what it is he's saying that even though you do not totally understand the full implications or the full details of what God is communicating, you will be willing to take the journey with him. This is what Paul was trying to explain to us in the book of Hebrews. When you go to Hebrews chapter 11 and begin at verse 8, the Bible says, it is by faith that Abraham, when he received instructions from the Lord, to leave his country, to leave his kindred, and to leave his father's house, he left not knowing where he was going. Have you seen that scripture before? Hebrews 11 and verse 8. Not knowing where he was going. That is the part of this scripture that strikes my heart. 
By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place where, where he, which he would have received, which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, what? Not knowing where he was going. So the details that were communicated were not fully understood. All the implications of the journey were not fully communicated, but the little information that came to Abraham was enough to trigger what? Faith. So he was willing to go on the journey with God, and you will see why in verse 10. Verse 10. Verse 10. Verse 10. He says, For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So Abraham was looking for something beyond what mortals could give. And this is what kept him on the journey. So even though he didn't have all the details, he continued to walk with God by faith. This is what happens in the journey of the believer. When you begin to walk with God, you make contact with the realm of God. I said the next thing that will happen is that there will be communications. This is when you begin to have dreams about your destiny. This is when you begin to have visions about your future. This is where things like burdens begin to precipitate upon your soul. And you begin to understand that even, if, even though you talk like a man, you look like a woman, you act like a male, and you have female genitals and organs, there is more to you than your physique. You begin to realize that there is a dimension of your mortal expression that was factored in eternity to guarantee a purpose that will live beyond time to find expression in your life. So you no longer live for the mundane. When your mates are running after frivolous, meaningless enterprises, you are burying your head in the place of prayer and seeking to become deep in God, not because you want to be famous, but because you want to find a city. You want to come into a place whereby the things that have been communicated to you in secret, you can now begin to say that you've had interactions. I showed you in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 1 that there are various levels of interactions and there are various levels of what? Intensities. There's the interaction at the level of hearing. There's the interaction at the level of seeing. There's an interaction at the level of looking. And there's an interaction at the level of handling. And all of these things have different intensities. Seeing is deeper than hearing. Looking is deeper than seeing. And handling is deeper than looking. So the reason you will not waste your life pursuing what your age mates are pursuing is because communications have taken place. Show me a Christian that is careless, that is a loose cannon, that is living without restraint, living without government. I'll tell you a Christian that has not made contact. Because the call will bring you into God's environment. But when you come into God's environment, there is a language for contact. It's called hunger and test. Mm. It's called hunger and test. So even Jesus said, let him that test do what? Come. So your coming will be on the basis of your what? Your test. So when you go around Christian space, you will find various categories of people. There are people who have answered the call, but they've never made contact with God. So they came to the altar. They said, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. But after singing that day, they went back home to top up their experience with Big Brother Nigeria. They, they, they answered the call, but they've never, ever paid the price to know God. Ah, some scriptures used to trouble me, my brother. Seek the Lord while he, he may be found. Call upon him while he is what? Near. Those scriptures used to worry me. So it was an indication that there are seasons where God can be found. 
Ask of me rain in the time of the latter rain. And I will give you both the latter rain, the former and the latter rain. I will give you both the former and the latter rain. So that means that there are seasons where you ask for rain eh, and all you will get is latter rain. But there are seasons where if you ask for rain according to the commandments of God, both the former and the latter rain are mandated to pour upon you. The Bible will say things like, if the clouds be full of rain, it will empty itself upon the earth. So it means that there are certain times that no matter how you want rain, if the clouds are not full, there can be no empty. So it's not enough to respond to the call of God. You must come into the environment that is called the Christ. I've taught you before. The main gain of salvation is compatibility. The main gain. In saving you, God now made it possible for you to be able to be compatible with the Spirit of God. Regeneration in your spirit is to empower you to make contact with God. So, if you are making contact with God consistently, then the communications of God will be steady in your spirit. You will be hearing God. You will know what you ought to do. You will know where you ought to live. You will know who you ought to marry. You will know what you ought to do with your life. God will come and tell you that you are going to be a tailor for 14 years. And after that 14 years, you will go into full-time ministry. You will know. Your life will not be guesswork. It will be according to a pattern. A pattern. This is why, dear brother, that Paul was able to tell his spiritual son, Timothy. He said, like a drink offering, I am ready to be what? Poured out. I have fought the good fight. I have run the, my race. I have done, done what? Finished my course. I have finished. Because he knew when he started. He knew how far he needed to travel. And notice, dear brother, like I told them in Kogi State, he did not say, I have finished the course. Because the course, one man can't finish it. That the course Every man has his portion inside. That's why it's only foolish people that when they enter into ministry, they think they are the best thing that has happened to the Christian faith. Oh God, you just have a course in the course. Every man will have his portion there. That's why Paul said, I have finished what? My course, my own, my own. I have finished. So he was telling Timothy, if you like, don't finish your own. He said, but there is one who is coming who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing. So if you like, be, be, run around and be telling yourself that you are the same. I'm young. So when a man is young, the time of his youth is for him to enjoy his life. He said, don't worry. Don't worry. If you like, don't do the work of an evangelist. Don't fulfill your ministry. I have finished my course. So, if the communications are clear, in the communications will be what we call commandments. Because every vision that is initiated by the Spirit of God will come with an anti-compromising lock. What do I mean by an anti-compromising lock? There's a system of preservation for destiny that God factors into every destiny. And the way he communicates that system of preservation is that he will give you what? Commandments. That if you do this, and you do this, this thing that I have shown you will become yours in reality. So those commandments will be, will be coming with the communications. What many young Christians do is that they receive communications and they refuse to honor commandments. 
And they think that the communications are isolated from the commandments. So God visits Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. And he says, come out. The call was made. Verse 2, he now says, and I will make your name great. And I will make you a great nation. And through you, the nations of the world will be blessed. I will bless them that bless you. And curse them that curse you. And then he gets to Genesis chapter 15. And then he begins to tell him, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. The one who is a, a servant in your house will not be your heir. Sarah is going to give birth. Then he gets to Genesis chapter 17. He now begins to validate the things he has been telling him since Genesis chapter 2. Everything expressly commanded. And it is in Genesis chapter 17 now that he says to him, walk thou before me and be what? Perfect. And I remember asking you a question last week. What has he been doing since? It's because now the communications have reached a heightened level. Then God brings what? A commandment. Walk thou before me and be what? Perfect. I like a translation. It says blameless. Do you know what that word blameless means? It means without blame. That means God was saying, if I hear that a man has slept with another one's, man's wife, and they come and they say, who is the person? I don't want to hear that it is Abraham. You don't understand. That no matter what happens around you, the blame should never be found at your feet. So if all the men in your generation are doing things against God, you should be what? Blameless. Are you with me? That commandment was the anti-compromising lock for his communications. So for God to now make it a serious matter so that Abraham will understand that this is not just about you. Because when God picks a man and wants to do something with that man, it is not about the man, it's about the kingdom. It's about the advancement of God's kingdom and the establishing of his will and his purposes in the earth. So God now says, so that you know how serious this thing is, let me cut a covenant with you. So the end of the journey in a man's pilgrimage with the Lord is the place of what? Covenant. Now, the question is, why was God doing all of these things? What was the intent in the heart of God? What was God trying to establish? Because the thing that took me down that rabbit hole last week was that I was trying to show you what is Abraham's blessing. You remember? That's what took me there. What is the blessing of Abraham? And why is it that God had to bless Abraham? Why? Why? Why the blessing? You see, brethren, I was looking at the genealog genealogies of the Bible since for two days now. I've just been trying to run it through my spirit. And it's very interesting that you see Cain, who departs from the presence of God, goes and builds cities, goes and gets married, and even has a beautiful lineage. And I told you that the representation of that thing was about a civilization that could exist outside of what? The government of God. And that civilization still existed today. There are people who want to claim that they belong to God, but they do not want to be under God's government. That is the system of Cain. That is the system that we call Babylon. A godless system. A system where Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit are not king. Where self is exalted above the throne of God. Greed, gold, and self have been exalted above God. So you become your own God. It's Babylon. 
He had sons. The sons prospered. But in the midst of this chaos, we read in Genesis chapter 4 that Abraham knows his wife, Eve. I mean, Adam knows his wife, Eve. And they give birth to a son called Seth. And out of Seth, um, uh, they give birth to a son called Seth. And out of Seth, through the long line comes Noah. Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And out of Shem comes Terah. And out of Terah, Abraham. And then God looks at Abraham and says, I want to use you to do what? The revelation of what God was trying to do is in the blessings he was speaking over Abraham. What God wanted to establish with Abraham is a nation. Somebody say a nation. A nation. So you will notice in Genesis chapter 12, the emphasis is one, I will make your name great. Two, what is the next thing? I will make you a great nation. Hmm? I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. You, who is you? Abraham. So the emphasis is making him a great nation. Why did God want to bring a nation out of Abraham? Because the nations around had deviated from God. The influence of Cain and his Babylonian system had begun to spread. So God wanted to build a nation and from that nation establish his plan and his purposes. The emphasis of Abraham's blessing is not material prosperity. It's a nation. And I will show you in the covenant in Genesis 17 shortly. Because you see, when we sing songs in church like Abraham's blessings are mine, gin, 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 gin. Abraham's blessings are mine. What's that song? He will bless me in the morning and I'm blessed in the evening. Abraham blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Abraham blessings are mine. Ging, 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 ging. Abraham blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Blessing oh my God. Blessing oh yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So what is the blessing? What is the blessing? When the average Christian sings that song, you know what he's thinking about? A car. He's thinking of Jackpa. So when he leaves the hardship in Nigeria and lands in Canada, he says, my God, I'm enjoying Abraham's what? Oh my God. So what he thinks about as relates to Abraham's blessing is material prosperity. You see, brethren, give attention to scriptures. The reason God was choosing a nation, a man was to birth a nation. Why did he need to birth a nation? Because there was prophecy that needed to be fulfilled. Where is the prophecy? Give me Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. And between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head. And you shall bruise. Is he? Who was God speaking to you to here? Satan, the serpent. So there was a prophecy that there will be a seed of the woman that will bring an end to the reign of the serpent. That prophecy was hanging. That seed could not have come from the lineage of Cain. If you are still here, say amen. amen. 
I hope you like Bible study. You like Bible study. That seed could not have come from the lineage of Cain. That seed needed to come from a lineage that God himself will authorize. So everything God was doing with Abraham was with this matter in mind. This is the basis of circumcision. God wanted to be able to identify his family members. Are you with me? So if you said you belonged to the family of God, you will bear a mark. So that everyone who does not bear that mark cannot be part of the promise given to Abraham. So now we need to check what was the blessing, what was the promise? Galatians. Where do I go to first? Let me see. Give me chapter 4 and verse 22. Galatians chapter 4. And verse 22. Okay, no. Give me Galatians chapter 3. Let's begin at verse 1. 1. 1. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1. Okay. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed amongst you as what? Crucified. Next verse. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are of what? Are what? Next verse. And the scripture. When he says the scripture, what is he speaking about? The Old Testament. Are you with me? When he says the scripture, what is he speaking about? And the scripture, foreseeing that God will justify the Gentiles by faith, did what? Preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying what? So what's the gospel? To Abraham. In you shall all the nations be blessed. So, that thing that God was saying to Abraham was not about buying a private jet. It was the good news. That through you, Abraham, Gentiles will also be justified by faith. Are you still with me? Through you, Abraham, other nations that should not have a part in the covenant, through you, those nations shall now be called blessed. What is the blessing? Justification by what? Are you with me? Next verse. So then, those who are of faith are what? Because when I said the blessing is justification by faith, somebody like, they want to disagree, but their neck did not agree. <laughs> then those who are of faith are what? Blessed. With believing Abraham. Next verse. For as many as of works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. 11. 
but that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just shall live how? 12. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. 13. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, having become a cause for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. 14, the last verse. That what? So, stay, 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 stay. If you are still with me, say amen. Amen. So, Christ took our cause that the what? The blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in which environment? Christ Jesus. What is the blessing of Abraham? So that the Gentiles will be justified by faith in Christ Jesus. That we might receive what? The promise. What is the promise? The spirit through So the promise is not that when there are 15 people looking for the job, Abraham's blessing will not give you favor. The promise is that you will receive the spirit through faith. So everything that God was communicating to Abraham, Paul calls it the gospel. Oh, you are not here. What did Paul call it? That this gospel was preached to Abraham. So the blessing of Abraham is that you and I who are Gentiles will become part of God's family. Even though we do not have circumcision. Are you with me? Even though we do not have the circumcision, that physical cutting of the flesh that the Jews had that signified that they were a member of God's family, even if you are not circumcised. Because that's the argument of the book of Galatians. There were people coming to say, you cannot be saved without circumcision. You cannot enjoy salvation if you do not circumcise. Physical circumcision. And I told you last week, what was this circumcision? The cutting of the foreskin of the flesh. That's what it was. The excess skin that was upon the manhood of the the genitals of the male gender. They had to cut off the excess foreskin. That's what circumcision was. So it was like cutting off flesh. Excess flesh. Right? That act, God said, this is what becomes the seal Of my covenant between me and you. So God in Genesis chapter 17. Gives Abraham. The details of the covenant. Then when he finishes giving him the details of the covenant. He now says. This will be the sign. Of the covenant. What is the sign of the covenant? All your sons males. Must now be circumcised. In the flesh. What does the Bible now call the seal. In the New Testament. Who? The Holy Spirit. That is the promise. Are you here? So let's see it. Ephesians chapter 1, give me verse 13. Ephesians chapter 1, give me verse 13. Oh, I love scriptures. I just love the Bible. In him you so you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were what? Sealed with the Holy Spirit of what? Promise. So the entire thing that was happening with Abraham was that God was seeing nations, he was seeing peoples that otherwise would not be able to come to salvation. Unless they become partakers of Abraham's blessing. And what is Abraham's blessing? Abraham was justified by faith. So the blessing of Abraham is that you too will be what? Justified by faith. It has nothing to do with breakthrough. So when you say, I am blessed in the morning, I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. You better know that that blessing is the promise 
of the spirit. If you are singing, I am blessed in the morning, I am blessed in the evening, and you don't have any relationship with the Holy Ghost, you don't know the blessing. The believer's advantage is not church attendance, is depth in the spirit. Your advantage is in the Holy Ghost. This is why God made it possible that even though you are alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, you are brought nigh by the sacrifice of Christ so that you can be a partaker of the blessing. The blessing is what? The justification by faith. And what that does is that it makes you a candidate of the promise. What is the promise? The Holy Spirit. So when Jesus begins to tell you something like, it is better for you that I go. Because if I do not go, he will not come. You will now know why it is, it is you are cheating yourself if you do not make the sacrifice to build intimacy with the Holy Ghost. This is why when Peter got to the house of Cornelius, he was shocked. He never believed that the Holy Spirit will fall upon men that are uncircumcised in their flesh. He never believed. So when he came back and the, the others were, were challenging him, he said, look, it's not my fault. I'm not the one that initiated it. I never even believed it will happen. He said, I was in a vision. And then while I came out of the vision, two men were standing saying, come here. Meanwhile, God had already told me I should follow them. I followed them. I got there. He said, while I was speaking, the Holy Spirit came upon them like he came upon us in the upper room. Why? Because of Abraham's what? Blessing. We would have been we will not have been permitted to journey that far with God if not for the blessing of Abraham. This is why the mistake that Abraham did became a thorn in the flesh of the circumcised. Because this is something God had been planning even from the foundation of the world. He had been planning. He knew he was going to pick Abraham. He had been planning it carefully, arranging it, that when Abraham comes, then I'm going to build a nation through him. Abraham could not trust God, so he decided to feed his flesh. This was the basis of circumcision. Oh, you are not here. The reason God decided that the way I'm going to... Because, bro, have you thought about it? Why did God choose such a painful thing as the sign of a sweet covenant? If you've never been circumcised in your adult age, you don't know the pain of circumcision. You don't know. Ask mother. Some babies will not stop crying. Eight year old. Even Jesus was circumcised. Are you aware? Go and read your Bible. Eight years old, I mean eight days old, sorry, after birth, they are circumcised. Do you know the pain? In fact, two of Moses' sons, what are their names? Eh? What are their names? Where's Ovier? <laughs> the two of Moses' sons that went after the, the Shechemites concerning dinner. What are their names? Le Levi and Simeon, that's right. Levi and Simeon. Now, they wanted to punish their enemies. Eh? You know what they use? Circumcision. They said, this guy has defiled our sister. Then they pretended. They said, if you love my sister so much, eh? you must be like one of us. You are unclean. You don't know covenant. We don't give our daughters and our sisters 
to men that are not covenant men. He says, okay, if you want to be part of the covenant, do what? Circumcise. Hi, Shabarako. And love. You know love can make you do foolish things. You can be under the sun smiling. You say, wait till you do. You say, I'm in love. They say you will buy suya. The lady will be eating suya. You'll be eating onions. Hi. <laughs> Jesus will be, may you not eat onions. Kabo lovanaka. The lady will even say, Simon, eat suya. And I say, no, I don't like suya. Nalayo. Kabo lovanaka. He wants the suya to be enough in case the girl wants to eat more and he doesn't have money. He said, no, you, you, just, you just eat. Are you sure? He said, come on, you know how I love you now. Now lie. Love can make you do foolish things. Don't counsel a sister who has already fallen in love. She will not hear anything you are saying. The brain becomes like egg that is not properly fried. Have you seen egg? My God. Jesus. The time she can hear anything is when love has not entered. This is why we recommend, if you are feeling a reaction towards a brother, tell your pastor. It's not when you people have done midnight call for 42 days. <laughs> and you people have shared angelic encounters. I'm afraid of this generation. <laughs> hey! Jesus, your, your, your angel has been visiting an angel. Then you now come and say, Sir, help us to pray. Help you do what? What? Who do you want to suffer? Who do you? When you already know where you are going, who do you want to suffer? The best time to seek the face of God is when your emotions have not become involved. So they told Shechem, the Shechemites, they said, if you want to marry our sister, circumcise yourself. And love was so great. And they circumcised themselves. And Levi and Simeon knew what they were doing. They knew that a man that is circumcised cannot defend himself. Stay with me. Hmm. A man that is circumcised cannot hold a sword to defend himself. As wicked as that thing was that Jacob, when he was blessing his other sons, he cursed their anger. Yet the Bible was telling us a story. Men who are truly circumcised, self dies. When you find a man that can still promote self, eh, he has not yet been circumcised. The pain of circumcision will not let you go to battle to defend your own ego. The pain of circumcision will not allow you go to battle to defend your own pride. Circumcised men do not care about themselves anymore. Self has died. Excess flesh has been cut off. So even when the enemy comes, like when we're praying just now, eh, the thing of the devil cannot be found in their hand. They are weak men in the hand of a great God. Only God controls their appetites. What drove the Shechemites to circumcision? It was love. It's the same love that you have for God that will make you present yourself and say, circumcise me. Is that your love for God that will make you come to God? And when God says, oh God, lost has swallowed your heart, you will lie down and say, circumcise me. No pretense. It was love that drove Shechem. My generation doesn't love God. So excess flesh is growing. You find it in ministry. 
you find it everywhere. Nobody can turn the other cheek anymore. Can't turn the other cheek anymore. Everybody is angry. Anger is like an armed man. Nobody can prefer their brother to themselves. Did you hear the description of the God kind of love? He says preferring one another. Bro, do you know the meaning of that thing? That me and you are brothers in Christ. And there's only one opportunity. And you say, let my brother take it. Eh? For this life. <laughs> this life. For this Tinubu Nigeria. This life. When we want to come and tell strange testimonies in church. Even our thanksgiving has become demonized. If you are, you, are, you, are, you are not in the mortuary, but you are in the sanctuary. Right now, there are people whose legs are hanging like this. Right now, there are people who can't walk. If you know what God has done for you, why do you need somebody's misfortune to promote your thanksgiving? Why do you need somebody to, to stir you with somebody's disaster before you can open your mouth to give God thanks? We want to come and share testimony that all of us were Christians, but God chose me. You know those kind of testimonies are sweet. And people say, eh, give me that kind of favor. Meanwhile, what if in that matter is not you God wanted to have it? He wanted you to give it to your brother. We don't think like that. Because the average believer is not circumcised. He's alive. He wants to defend his masculinity. Do you know who you are talking to? Oga, who are you? Do you fly? When we walk on the road, all of us walk together. Even if you fly, I fly higher than you. I fly in the Holy Ghost. Do you have eight heads? It's not the same one head you have that everybody has. Love drove Shechem and his brothers and his uncles Oga, for a baby. Eh? The baby can bear the pain. A grown man. Don't believe me. When we are done, go and do medical research. Circumcision for an adult is considered a major surgery. Go and do research. An adult. Circumcision for an adult. Do you know that there are researches that say that even recovery is risky for an adult? It was in that kind of vulnerability. Do you know I've imagined that thing in my mind many times? That Levi and Simeon drew their sword and entered into Shechem. And men tried to stand. They could not stand. It's weak men that kill men when they are defenseless. If you are a man, fight him when he is a man. But do you know that that's the posture of the Christian life? Your only defense is Jesus. It's not be you that they talk to. Pilate looked at Jesus and said, Do you not know that I have ability to save you? Jesus smiled. He said, No man take my life from me. I lay down. The Bible says like a sheep goeth to his sharers. So Jesus went to the cross and he opened not his mouth. In Exodus chapter 4, there's another strange story there. That after God appears to Moses and says, the last thing I will do to Pharaoh is that I will enter Egypt and Kill all their firstborn sons. He said, but the firstborn sons of Israel will be preserved. Then the very next verse, we now hear, and the Lord met him on the way. You know that scripture does not tell you who he is. 
But that's not what I'm teaching tonight. Because there are theological camps around that scripture. Huh? Met him on the way and sought to kill him. And then the Bible says, Zipporah, his wife, immediately took a stone and circumcised the boy and threw the flesh at his feet. And then the Lord's anger was stopped. As mysterious as that scripture is, you find another metaphor. Moses, if we agree that him there is Moses. Moses was a Jew. He knew that any male that is a Jew must be circumcised. The question is, why had Moses not circumcised his son? And then, God is speaking about firstborns. Because if you look at the context, go back to 23. Go to 23. Go to 22. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, God is speaking with Moses here. He's giving him matching orders. Oh my God. He's giving him matching orders for destiny. Thus you shall say to Pharaoh, then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is who? My son. My first born. 23. So I say to you, let my son go that he may serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, indeed, I will kill your son. Your firstborn. Next verse. And it came to pass. Are you seeing the context of the conversation? What's the context? Sonship. And it came to pass on the way at the encampment that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. So, I just told you that I'm going to be separating sons. And there is a son in your house that does not bear covenant. did Moses' son grow up under Moses and did not bear the seal of covenant? I weep for parents that claim that they are part of the family. They bear the seal of covenant but their own children have not been circumcised. And I'm not talking about physical circumcision. I'm talking about their children being introduced to the God of covenant. What even hurts me the most is that you will see a spiritual family where everybody is going the same direction. Sons will be growing up whose four skins have not been cut. And sometimes the leaders and the fathers in the house are the ones encouraging them to grow four skins of flesh. The Lord sought to kill him. And you know what God was showing me from this scripture is that every time God meets a sinner, a sinner is a candidate of death. And no matter how loving Zipporah was, no matter how sincere she was, no matter how good intention she was, God would have killed. The only answer was what? Circumcision. <laughs> you see, tonight, eh? It's a night to lie before God and say, circumcise me. Sincerity does not replace circumcision. No. You must suffer the pain of this connection from your flesh. Because the Bible now says in the New Testament that the circumcision is not the one that is outward. It speaks about the circumcision of what? The heart. Of your inward man. Of the heart. Of the heart. Because that circumcision was a sign of your membership of God's family. You cannot be going to Pharaoh to say, release my sons. And there is a son in your house that is not part of the covenant. So God said, I will kill you. Brethren, that's how serious matters of circumcision were 
in the Old Testament. And I'm telling you tonight, this is the way I want to begin to wrap up tonight, that under the new covenant, even though circumcision is not the one that is outward, under the new covenant, if you don't bear the seal that you are a member of God's family, just as God met Moses and Zipporah, you too will meet the wrath of God. Excess flesh needs to be cut off. Needs to be cut off. You see, bro, and sisters, if you are not willing to be laughed at, mocked, ostracized, and called names, then you are not ready for Christianity in this century. The Christianity of this century is a, is a lascivious, borderless, lawless Christianity. A nonsense liberty that gives people license to kick against God and do whatever they think is right. Shechemites are the model for the Christianity of this age. Men who are not afraid of the pain of separation. Women that are not ashamed to say that the family to which I belong, we don't spread our legs for men anyhow. It doesn't matter if I will die unmarried. It doesn't matter. Shechemites. What is driving them is a love why do you think it was a, a relationship between a man and a woman? Not a son and a father. Not a daughter and a mother. It's because the woman is the metaphor for the church. If the church refuses to separate itself, it will be raped. And those that will be members of the church, that will be joined to the church, must be circumcised. Have you not noticed that the church is called the household of God? It's a family matter. And members of this family, they bear marks. Let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of Christ. Marks. I was hearing Pastor Ogogo lead us when we were praying. When they wanted to enter the promised land, what did God demand? Circumcision. You cannot enter into inheritances when your flesh has not been circumcised. Lost for money. Lost for fame. Lost for material gain. All kinds of things plague the Christian. And the reason is that we are not willing to go under the knife. Because when you have become old, bro, circumcision is painful. If at the time God is calling you, let this thing go, you refuse to let it go. At the time you now become reasonable and you say, Ah, oh, God, I want to do business with you. When you will bring the knife, ah, you will bleed so much. The people will say, why is God doing like this? Go and find out. When the person made contact with God, commandments followed, communications followed, and God said, it's time for covenant, and the person ran. Because when it comes to matters of covenant, there is a portion of sacrifice that will be laid upon you. And the person ran. Then now after 15 years, the person now wakes up and says, I want to be serious with God. I want to be serious with God. Then God will come and say, that matter that I discussed with you that day, that's where we are continuing from. Then the person will now have to make up their mind. Do you know that today, I was in my study just praying, enjoying God. 
I don't know what prompted the Holy Spirit to begin to have that conversation with me. And the Holy Spirit mentioned to me that, son, do you know it has been 20 years? 20 years since I began to move on your spirit in these matters. Because I was raising a matter of concern concerning the way certain treatments I have received in certain quarters. And the Lord reminded me, he said, it's been 20 years. It's for the first time it occurred to me that this is 2024. The fires of God began to burn on my heart the way it's burning now in 2004. I was just about to leave university. It's been 20 years. And the, the conversations began to change as tears fell from my eyes. I began to tell God that I don't want to be old and realize that there were things I should have done for my king that I abandoned. I don't want to get to 50, 60 and begin to realize that there were opportunities to do things for God. And maybe my flesh, one nonsense thing that somebody said discouraged me. You see, bro? This part I have chosen, I will die for it. As long as Jesus give me, gives me grace, I will die for it. It doesn't even matter if Levi and Simon have drawn swords. Hmm? It is love that drove me to sacrifice myself. Love. It's love that drove me to make myself a sacrifice on his altar. And say to him, Lord, what you want to do with this life, do with it. So if Simeon and Levi come with swords into the camp and say it's my life they want to take, I'm glad I don't have a defense. I'm glad. Because either by well wind or by spear or arrow, no guilt in life, no fear of death. guilty life. But you see, I'm not going to compromise. I don't care how attractive the world looks. Flesh needs to die. If God permits us in the next part, I'm going to show you the signs of a circumcised heart. I will show you what a circumcised heart looks like. I will show you. But to be in the family of God and think you will not be circumcised, you are a joker. Paul was saying circumcision is not the one that is outward. Forget about outward. Something must happen to you on the inside. It now affects your appetite. It affects the way you treat your wife. It affects the way you honor your husband. It affects the way you respond to your parents. It affects the way you raise your children. Don't be like Moses that a child is growing in your house and is uncircumcised. I didn't have time to get there. I wanted to show you that everybody in Abraham's house was circumcised, including servants. Eliezer was circumcised. The one that went to look for wife for Isaac, even him went under the knife. Went on that night. Yet the Bible says that the promise was not to Hagar. The promise was not to Keturah. The promise was to Isaac. Why? There was a prophecy in Genesis 3. It says, His seed, not their seed, his seed. Or her seed, her seed, the seed of the woman. Her seed. He, he, not them. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So even though Hagar had 12 sons, her 12 sons were also princes. But the Bible says they promise. I will get there next week. We will not read Genesis 17. God said the promise is to Isaac. 
You see, when I see a Christian, I see saying things like, eh, I don't know why this anger, this lust, this immorality, or God, or God. The reason you are like that is that you don't know the benefits of being circumcised. You die to this world. You will be in pain, oh, in pain. But it's only for a while. You will heal. In fact, we even pray prayers that, Lord, don't let my circumcision ever heal. Let me not become strong in myself. Let me consistently remember to lean on the Holy Ghost. Tonight, I want to give you an opportunity to cry. Circumcise me again. Circumcise me. Oh no, guilt in love. No fear of death. I will wait on you till you come or call me home. My reward is you now and then. Oh, we die by well, we die by spell. on your feet but i want you to stand by yourself kneel by yourself take a posture that is good for you but open your mouth and cry that is circumcise me circumcision is a cry of a lover it's lovers that submit themselves under the knife they come under the knife 
and they say Lord cut off the excess flesh cut it off and the barakade on the makwa oh God you say you love Jesus why are you this wicked why do you think wicked thoughts towards your brother dear sister why do you think wicked thoughts towards your sister is excess flesh is excess flesh it needs to be cut off if you are going to be a partaker of his holiness if you are going to enter into your inheritance you must be circumcised we are not talking about the foreskin of a man we are talking about the foreskin of your heart we are talking about the loss that cries within your heart we are talking about the pride we are talking about the deception the wickedness the rebellion that is like witchcraft the stubbornness that is like divination that's what we are talking about we are talking about this love for materialism this love for money abraham's blessing is not a car it's the promise of the holy ghost based on justification by faith that's abraham's blessing help me lord i don't want to be old and find out that i never lived for god i don't want to grow old and find out that I wasted my life. Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! I am! I am! I am! Circumcise your church! Circumcise your church! Lord! I know it's not a sweet prayer point many cannot even pray they will say he has come again he has come again don't worry if you want to use your life as an experiment try it 10 years from now you will know the preacher didn't lie you will know I didn't lie nations are waiting for the true sons of this family and the way they will know them is that they have been circumcised they've been separated from the world they don't want what the world wants they don't love what the world loves they don't pursue what the world pursues they bear a seal of the spirit the holy ghost is the one at work on their inside he coordinates what they love he coordinates what they like he coordinates who they marry he coordinates where they walk he coordinates how they live they live by the spirit for the flesh profited nothing everything in circumcision in the new covenant is by the spirit oh oh